Hotep, I'm Dr. Gloria Lattimore, Peace, host and producer of OmniU Presents, the H3O Art of Life show. The title of this show is called Green Living, Living Green. And I have on the show, I'm just real excited about this, I tell you, Johari. I'm real excited about having this show today because not only do I have Louisa Anthony, who, who you know, practices what she preaches, but I also have Johari Cole, who practices what she preaches. And the thing that's really exciting is Johari was at one time the co-host of this show. Mm -hmm. And then she disappeared into the wallpaper <laughs> and raised some children, homeschooled them, sent them off to college and, yes. and did a lot of other stuff. So I'm forgiving because that's my nature. But uh, <laughs> I just wanna, I just wanna give some background into uh, my guests. I, I want them to give some background uh, into themselves. For one thing, I know that home birth, homeschooling, there's no place like home, <laughs> is your mantra. Mm -hmm. And because you live in what people call the rural, in Hopkins Park, Pembroke area, I think that people don't understand that this is the most sustainable lifestyle mm -hmm. that we have today. So talk about how you came to make those choices and we'll see where we go from there. You can start, Johari. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was raised, um, I always say I was raised as a hybrid between rural and city life, metropolitan right. life, um, being raised partly in Michigan. Um, on a farm with my grandparents and also going to school and being raised here in Chicago. About an hour and a half drive between Chicago and Covert, Michigan where I grew up. So the, the dichotomy between both worlds were always upon me. Mm -hmm. um, so I, it was a no-brainer when I got older. I was missing that part of my life. I couldn't just, even though I complained about shelling peas and, you know, didn't want to live that, that lifestyle anymore, like couldn't wait to leave like most high school students do. Mm -hmm. um, as I got to be an adult, I realized how important that life was and the balance it gave me between having, you know, being in an urban setting. Um, you know, especially on the south side, grew up partly on the west side of Chicago as well as on the south side. And, and you know, you talk about mass shootings in Chicago now. Well, do, during that time, there were a lot of gang initiations and mass shootings going on on both sides of Chicago. Um, so that was very common. Um, so what balanced me out was being able to go to Michigan and living in a rural community. And I realized that sanctitude of that that lifestyle and what it what it offered um, organic farming and the you know the clean food being being exposed to that was so important and I wanted to share that with my children I had to share that with my children I had to be about that and so I sought when my husband and I went to about our business of finding some kind of uh, sanctuary of that nature um, it just so happened we found ourselves in Pembroke through you know mutual friends and and it drew, we, we were called there. And mm -hmm. so this was where we wanted to settle down and raise our children. One of the things that we have in common, and uh, there's a lot we have in common because we share the same values, mm -hmm. is that uh, I'm a farm girl, but not from the sense of having grew, grown up on a farm in the same way as you. Mm -hmm. I spent summers in Mississippi mm -hmm. and, and you know the rest of the school year here in Chicago. And I always thought that it was a, sp a superior way to live. Absolutely. You know, the, the hard part was getting up in the morning. <laughs> you know, yes. getting up <laughs> at, at dawn, dawn when the sun is coming up. But once you got up, once you got up and got moving, it was great because you did, got a whole lot of stuff in before really the did. sun came up and got really sometimes unbearable. Mm -hmm. But the thing was that, you know, I don't think people understand what the taste is of ripe yes. fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And I have not had anything like that in my life, I don't think, <laughs> since then. Mm -hmm. So I do know, you know, what it's like to live on a farm and to work on a farm. Mm -hmm. But I've been, you know, a city girl, west side and south side, mm -hmm. my entire life after my father passed away. 
Now you yeah. did what? Well, you didn't choose. Story, yeah. You didn't. You didn't have to find out how to go there. You were already there. Already there. Yeah. When she mentioned about the shootings and all that, that that's where my my journey started. My parents lived in Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, and when um, during the 60s and you know all the riots and stuff that was going on, mm -hmm. they decided to move to the city. They decided to move to you know Hopkins Park, mm -hmm. um, you know for children's sake, mm -hmm. you know for our sake. Mm -hmm. And so I've been there ever since. Mm -hmm. I was raised there in Hopkins Park. Same, you know. I, right now I live just down the street from where I grew up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and my father, he's from you know he he was from the south. Because I remember when you we know, were growing up, he had a um, vegetable truck. Mm -hmm. So he was one of those that drove around, right, right, and right, he go <laughs> the corner and buy your so stuff. He yes, came and back and mm -hmm. forth to Chicago every yeah. day with mm -hmm. his vegetable truck, his watermelons, wah wah watermelons. Right, you right, know, he was right, one of those. Right. You know, um, I mean, but as a little kid, I was like, I didn't, I didn't, we didn't, we had gardens, mm -hmm. um, but not nearly as big as what we have now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was, it's five of us in my family, my brothers and sisters, but uh, my father, we, uh, we grew some vegetables, but mainly he brought, he bought it from the farmers mm -hmm. in the local community. And uh, my brothers, you know, got on the truck and went to the city with them. And mm -hmm. that's how, you know, they made, he made his money. Right. But, um. When and that's I, how he saved those of us who were in the city. Yeah. <laughs> because my mother always insisted on, now it's hard to insist on it, my mother always insisted on homegrown tomatoes. She absolutely. had absolute contempt for hothouse tomatoes. <laughs> she, my mother had absolute contempt for, because she was a country girl. Mm -hmm. So she had absolute contempt, contempt for a uh, fowl that was what they call, they called them cold storage. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying frozen chickens, mm -hmm. co they called them cold storage. Mm -hmm. My mother wouldn't <laughs> look at a chicken she didn't touch in the first place. <laughs> so the thing was that we would go mm -hmm. down on the corner, and usually it was on a corner, mm -hmm. and go to the truck, and we would get the homegrown tomatoes, and we get the homegrown okra, and the greens, and the corn, and the everything mm -hmm. and that is what we that's what we consumed in the summertime now in the winter time it was a different situation mm -hmm. because my mother didn't can I have right. a sister-in-law who still does she grows a garden and she still does canning but most of us didn't do any canning so when winter came we were at the mercy of the local merchants who then if you're going to have a tomato, it's going to be mm -hmm. hot house. Yeah. If you're going to have chicken, it's going to be cold starch right. or frozen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have had the privilege for lo these many years <laughs> to, to not only to enjoy this kind of life, but to be a participant mm -hmm. in creating this kind of life. You talked about you have a larger farm. Mm -hmm. You have a Yabo farm. Do you call your farm by name? The Anthony Family Farm. The Anthony Family <laughs> Farm. Well, she got a sign up. Do you have a sign up? <laughs> no. no. Okay. Okay, <laughs> how did the Yabo Farms mm -hmm. come into existence? Mm -hmm. Well, we knew we wanted to farm. Um, you know, while my husband and I were here in the city, one of the things that we did get started was the Kibalon Whole Foods. We started that on around 75th near Yates. I, would, I used to come and buy. Absolutely. Yes. And um, from there, we didn't have access to land at the time, but we knew that it was important to uh, make a connection to bring, you know, especially African Americans back into a center of health. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the ways to do that was connect them back to some real food, organic mm -hmm. food, which mm -hmm. we thought was so key to having at least, you know, being able to have access to that. Because um, as LaDonna Redmond even mentioned many times before, who she's come down to our place to get her start in her, you know, in her quest and journey, mm -hmm. um, was that she can get, you know, a, you know, a gun on a corner before she can get a, red, a regular ripe tomato. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. an organic mm -hmm. tomato. Mm -hmm. So we saw that very early on and tried to put that in place. Um, unfortunately, when we had to close the doors after three years, mm -hmm. because people were like, organic? What is that? Mm -hmm. It was way before its time. And then, too, they make mm -hmm. it, it's ridiculous that you, mm -hmm. they make it more expensive mm -hmm. for you to have organic products 
because the licensing, you know, yes. they have to come out and inspect and all this other stuff, the 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 standards that you have to meet. Right. You know, Absolutely. make it necessary to have to have to have to charge more. Absolutely. And people just buy price. Mm -hmm. You know, they want a three for a dollar, five for a dollar. They mm -hmm. they look at that and they say, Well, I've only got X and a amount of dollars but when you said you could find a gun cheap quicker than you could a tomato oh, yes. you know cities are almost war zones and food does it simultaneously Absolutely. people mm -hmm. can hardly get even hot house tomatoes anymore <laughs> you know they're in the convenience stores buying all this processed food packaged canned you know vacuum dried whatever right uh, and and there's virtually no nutrition. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. in most of the corner stores now, the only requirement it, the legislate a lot of legislation legislation has passed that required mom pa stores they have to carry some some um, fresh fruits and vegetables in the stores mm -hmm. in order to be you know in order to be legitimate um, mm -hmm. in within the store and be able to receive mm -hmm. food stamps or mm -hmm. what is called link card now. Um, and so all they have to carry, and a lot of them do this, they can carry one tomato mm, in mm -hmm. that store, and they're mm. qualified. And look at the prices. And that's whenever all you have to find, carry Whenever one. you find them in convenience stores, the bananas <laughs> may be a dollar a piece. Yes. The apples may yes. be a dollar a piece. Yes. You know, it's, it, the prices are formidable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what are you going to do? You can't afford, now mm -hmm. that's higher than organic food would right. be if it were available. It is. Mm -hmm. right. And we, we unfortunately, we were way above, way before our time, before Whole Foods came into the picture, um, you know, and when um, that's when we, we had our store. So we closed our doors within, you know, a three years time, and then it was just taking off. A lot of people wanted to interview us and everything, but we couldn't really sustain ourselves. But we wanted to go ahead and make go on the production side of mm -hmm. it so we can have it cut out a lot of the middlemen in terms of getting to our area, and we wanted to concentrate on the, the production side. So that's when we uprooted, you know, ourselves and moved down to Pembroke permanently, and that was over 20 years ago. And you found you were able to find find land mm -hmm. because somebody you know Absolutely. that you knew who was already there. A mutual friend of ours, um, Basu, who owns Basu, Basu Farms, Farms. Yeah. and he's still down there uh, with a wonderful, um, you know, wonderful farm himself. Right, and a and museum. In the museum, mm -hmm. and, right, and I definitely invite everyone to come down there and visit that. Um, right. And um, they're they're also hosting the Garvey festivals every year on their place. Right. Um, but before he was all that, he was Basu mm -hmm. with his um, house and farming and the Crowder peas and just inviting us down mm -hmm. to come and hang out with him and mm -hmm. visit. And we found ourselves continuously coming down there and visiting. <laughs> <laughs> and when the opportunity arose, when there was land available, my husband and he let us know we jumped on it mm -hmm. without hesitation. Mm -hmm. So let's when you do talk it. about you tired of selling peas, I'm waiting uh, right now for uh, some peas to be no, no. shelled. <laughs> I am <have> not <laughs> We were just but having a conversation. <laughs> you were? Oh, we were just oh, having a conversation. That's what I picked last weekend. Yeah, a few okay. days ago. Are you going to shell them yourself or are you going to take them over? They already shelled. <laughs> Who did it? Well, nature did me, of it. myself, and <laughs> I had dry. four, five little ones with me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, not, they weren't all little, from 14 to 7. Okay. <laughs> um, we picked, we only picked two, two rows though. Mm -hmm. Okay. We got about 20 more to go, but we only picked two. <laughs> okay. And we and picked them and then we sat there and watched TV and sang there some songs and okay. shelled peas yes. until they were all shelled. But the, you, there's a place you can do that because I know you can there's take a them to a machine. Well, we have a machine yeah. too, there's but machine it was just faster that. for six of us to shell peas than mm -hmm. one of us sticking them in a machine. Really? Yeah. 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 Yeah, ours was dry. dry. Yeah, ours the, was dry. Usually you the machines do for fresh. Mm -hmm. Okay. And th that's when it really helps with the fresh peas because fresh peas are harder to shell than dry peas. Right, okay. Dry peas, you can just. Okay, yeah. so you were shelling fresh that's peas. No, no, we dry were dry. You were doing that's why it's a lot easier. Yeah. Okay. We have a sheller which you can put the, the fresh ones in there too. You usually right. have to put water on them or whatever to make them go through better. Mm -hmm. Right. But we don't have room to put fresh peas in the freezer so we yeah. dried them dried. so we can just put them on the shelf okay okay <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, uh, the freezer <laughs> <laughs> how big does the freezer have to be because you got oh farm. Gosh. No, yes. we we have three freezers. Yeah, They're about oh, industrial, industrial size. Yeah, industrial, <laughs> industrial size, size okay. freezers. Okay, <laughs> but 
two of them are already filled. So okay. And the third one is a third full, so we only got two thirds left of that, and we have to reserve that for the meat. Okay. So okay. I have to dry and can what's left in the garden, which okay. is a lot, and okay. the fruit, fruit trees. Okay. I have to can those so that we can reserve that space for the for the meat. Well, I guess, and I just I told her. I just <laughs> I, I just told her on the way here. I said I didn't I didn't do any um, vegetable shopping. What I couldn't get out of my garden, I'm just going to hit her garden <laughs> for the rest of it. Right. And, and, <laughs> it's, like, you know, it's just nice yeah. to okay for dinner today. When I, I had to, we wanted pizza today. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was nice to go out to the garden, pick my tomatoes. Absolutely. I picked my peppers. peppers. Yeah. Um, I picked uh, some broccoli. Okay. And I came in the house. Whipped up my biscuit dough, because okay. biscuit dough is heavier and will fill you up faster than the yeast dough. So okay. that's my, <laughs> when you got kids, you got to do that. Okay. Um, and then I, you know, I uh, made my sauce, spread it on. Uh, we had sausage, but it wasn't our own sausage, but hey, okay. okay. And they usually make their own sausage. Yeah, we usually, okay. my husband usually makes the yeah. sausage. So I got it. You, you spread it all out and you have a, a meal from the garden. And that's, I mean, but that's what I appreciate the most about Absolutely. being in the country. Because you, your self-esteem got to be way up here. Oh, <laughs> you know, because, I mean, yes. you know, when you're that bad, you just got to know it. <laughs> but, you know, you, you raise your own animals. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yes, so you you know the chickens. Well, not me, my husband and <laughs> the men. She, okay, she, 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 all she, the <laughs> inside the house. On the farm, <laughs> on the farm, there the are animals that you are raising. Yeah, we mm -hmm. have pigs, we have ducks we have rabbits goats because we I have goats, my goats. <laughs> um is that all we have out there now don't uh, have a cow chickens no we, your chickens we don't have a cow okay mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. tell me about the pigs why do you have pigs <laughs> they're easier to raise than cows <laughs> okay one time my husband had to run this cow down the road uh, eight miles to mm -hmm. catch him and bring him back to the house okay uh, you, you don't run down pigs too much. Okay. They don't usually go that far away. Well, they have they pigs, big old pigs size live in down the ones. <laughs> they'll they'll cow do too. I mean, they, they all graze. graze. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. but you don't let them out to pasture? Well, well the pasture is fenced within. in. Rather okay. A pig is in so or a cow in out of the pasture? Well, broke the fence or rubbed it too much. I'm just trying to figure out what Oh, they'll get out. A cow for miles. That's what it has, my big billy goat. Okay. He kept breaking down all the fence. Well, do you have any other animals? Chickens, we have poultry. You have poultry? Did I see any? I don't know. Okay. At one point, you were talking about a tilapia farm. Yes. Did you do that? Did you try that? We did raise some of the tilapia in our own for our own consumption, not not for commercial use. Okay. Okay. That was interesting the way you had that set up because it was it was certainly my daughter says she's not eating anything that comes out of the ocean because there's so much waste. You know, from all these spills and Fukushima's rolling up Absolutely. to the coastlines and yeah. whatnot. So you really don't know what's going on with the water supply and especially with, you know, life living in there. Wow. Yeah, it gets, it gets really scary. Right. But yeah. you, were, you were using, you had a hydroponic uh, mm -hmm. system. Yeah, an aquaponic system. Aquaponic, where you had greenhouse. plants growing in mm -hmm. one part of it. Yes. And <laughs> the plants were cleaning up mm -hmm. the water the waste of the fish and then the fish were in turn drinking pure water right so it's a it's a closed loop system okay so once you have your containers of fish growing in um bins mm -hmm. okay or large containers mm -hmm. the water that the fish waste water mm -hmm. actually is feeding the plants so mm -hmm. you have plants that you know in different tiers mm -hmm. of plants and we do it for our seedlings to help our seedlings um, grow and then so the fish waste is the nitrogen mm -hmm. and that's feeding into the plants and that's not hydroponics where there's no soil our plants are all in soil okay I personally don't believe in hydroponics but well I um, think they don't give ours is plants the nutrition not all the nutrition because if you can. have to you know use man-made you know nutrients to mm -hmm. feed the plants and there's a lot of nutrients that we're still finding out that's mm -hmm. needed that's in soil mm -hmm. in very good soil mm -hmm. that you know that's a lot of different nutrients that mm -hmm. you would have to provide mm -hmm. you know and where's the value in that if you have to buy that from a company mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not organic, it's not organic at, that, at that point no mm -hmm. um, but all the plants are in soil they're soil based and mm -hmm. the only thing you're providing them is natural nitrogen coming off of the fish water and mm -hmm. providing them their 
their water supply mm -hmm. and then they clean up the waste and, it's, and then it filters clean water filters back to the mm -hmm. fish. Now so that's, that's a green closed living. loop system. <laughs> that's sure yeah. enough green living. <laughs> Do you green have to fish. use uh, any of the commercial chemicals for your farm? Do you have to put the weed and feed or weed mm -hmm. and kill or whatever, mm -hmm. I don't know these names. Well, if you call a whole commercial, you hold the weed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Store, yeah. So you do it. You <laughs> are a school. You are a school <laughs> farmer because that's what I learned to do during summers. Mm -hmm. We that's would have to actually, mm -hmm. of course, I it, being not all the time on the farm. I had to be cautioned and restrained because mm -hmm. sometimes I was. I, they said I chopped down as much cotton <laughs> as I did uh, mm -hmm. weeds because yeah. apparently I couldn't distinguish which plant was which so <laughs> I just went along the roads you know just chopping away mm -hmm. and they you know they had to get me and you know give me some lessons in how to chop cotton mm. so I, I I did know the purpose of a hoe I did know the purpose <laughs> of a rake I did know the purpose <laughs> of a shovel I did know what a tractor looked like I, I I was on a wagon behind a mule. I was on a slide <laughs> behind a mule. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you got accustomed to doing a lot of stuff. And when you talk mm -hmm. about going out into the garden, going out into the garden and That's picking wonderful. the, the, the food that is going to be on your table Absolutely. The, that evening mm -hmm. is, uh, listen, it, I tell you, though, when I, after being in the city for a very long time, when I went back to the farm, I could not taste, I couldn't t stand the taste of an egg. I mean, it looked like yeah. the yolks were wow. almost golden oh, yeah. as compared to yes. the yolks of, of eggs here. Mm, it is. But I, I, mm -hmm. I used to love cow's milk, especially when it was churned mm -hmm. and they took the butter off. I liked the butter that came off of yes. it on biscuits and mm -hmm. I liked the, to drink the milk and I liked to, like to, um, I liked the, you know, the eggs, but I, I couldn't, something, something, enzymes or something changed. Mm -hmm. Eating yeah. this mm -hmm. processed commercial food oh, yeah. is not the same food. Yes, yeah, it's not the happen. same food. I, I can't personally taste, um, I can't eat commercial eggs now. Mm -hmm. um, and when I open them, they smell almost ammonia, like mm -hmm. they have an ammonia smell. Mm -hmm. I don't eat them. eggs at all, so yeah. I don't have to deal with it I anymore. I can't eat commercial eggs, so I mean, I have to, you know, reserve myself to eating, you know, our own eggs or mm -hmm. you know, some from local farmers. Or you can go over her house. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We and our chickens raise. We raise eggs too, so mm -hmm. our chickens lay eggs. So mm -hmm. we have our own egg layers. And like last night, I have a young um, a girlfriend of mine who's staying with me for a, a minute and getting her away from the city for a while and so she helped me pick the greens last night for dinner mm -hmm. and you know some cold roving collards mm -hmm. and you know we had that along with the fresh tomatoes mm -hmm. and, you know, um, mm -hmm. last night for dinner and and it was just they they ate themselves just silly of course. <laughs> ate themselves of course. silly of it was just course. silly <laughs> do you <laughs> make hot water, water cornbread yeah, but I actually like it in the oven better. You yeah. like it in the oven? I, I do. do too. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like hot water cornbread. I like it both ways, like only the country people know yeah, but how to oh make yeah. it. You have to have yeah. cornbread with your greens. You of course you can't have. You can't mm -hmm. have, you can't <laughs> have <laughs> what can you have if you don't have cornbread? <laughs> and I just like, now I like okra, but when I was growing up, I did not like it. Don't <laughs> overcook it. Right. right. That's, that's the whole thing. Thing. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the point. Don't, don't, don't do the texture of it. You know, you can't kill okra. Yeah. Yeah. Put it in at the last minute and still green. Let's see, countries. greens and okra and sweet potatoes. Oh, yes. Baked, I like baked, uh, corn on mm -hmm. the cob. I mean, and a, a fresh green onions, you grow those? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. We got the Good squash choice. coming in now, the butternut the squash yellow, and the yeah. acorn squash. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I love those in the oven oh, with some okay. cinnamon those. and some butter. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Ooh. Okay. So okay. We're looking forward hungry. to that one now. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, I'm, sitting, I'm sitting here wanting to follow you home. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, you know, but you got somebody stand out there with you now. I have, I have <laughs> always have land room. out there. Yeah. Always have room. I have mm -hmm. not occupied the land, but it's yeah. there. Yes. And if things keep getting the way they're getting in cities, you may look up mm -hmm. one day and see me out there in some kind of dwelling. Mm -hmm. You know. In fact, I thought 
Well, you don't actually have to build on the land. You have, you can grow on the land you yes. have, and then you can actually get a house that's already built. Yeah, sure. It has houses. rooms in it, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 and indoor plumbing, because you mm -hmm. have indoor plumbing. Oh, yeah. Yes. You know, yes. You, you're not, you, this is not old old time no, that far back. living mm -hmm. right and we have yeah. an outhouse for that's actually part of gap requirements for the, you know gap means good ag practices okay so we do have an outhouse that i mean you know with a young boy growing up a lot of times it smell better than the in-house but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, right but it's it's part of you know, it has to be you have to have uh facilities near okay. your garden area if you have to have workers okay. and things like that so okay. we have a beautiful outhouse mm -hmm. i'm you know yeah. what I mm -hmm. think it's that's fantastic. a great idea. <laughs> I think that's a great idea mm -hmm. to just have a handy, convenient toilet. Because mm -hmm. as I remember, we we had an outhouse, mm -hmm. and I, as I remember, the chickens always were around that outhouse mm -hmm. because it seemed to me that the chickens fed on the waste. Oh. Because the, every time I was, you mm -hmm. know, looked around. I could see chickens around there. I guess that's what they were doing the because bugs. they were always they were be always bugs. around yeah. feeding the bugs. The, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. always around the outhouse. Mm -hmm. But um, so you do you do farming. You plant. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. You plant <laughs> seeds yes. by hand, or you have a, something. You have mm -hmm. any? We plant well, by hand. hand. Yeah, you, by hand. You know, hand um, planters. Even mm -hmm. okay. they're like little. They broadcast the seeds. Um, no. Some broadcast depending on what it is that you're growing. Okay. Um, but you know, there are little planters, little seedlers. Okay. So you not you don't necessarily have to do it one seed by hand okay mm -hmm. there are you can pour it into a bin a hopper mm -hmm. okay and then you know and just walk behind walk, it okay and then drop the seeds okay. in. And more okay. it gives it a more uniform look okay mm -hmm. yes and so, mm -hmm. but it's still by hand it's you don't have to have it. irrigation do you in order to get yeah, the plants yeah. to grow you yeah. do have to have yeah, irrigation absolutely. Mm -hmm. yes because you yeah. really don't want to be out there with a garden hose and well, mm. our gardens are too big for just... <laughs> yeah, we have the sprinklers, <laughs> yes. you know, okay. that we move around the garden. And it depends yeah. on, you know, what you're growing and the soil that you're growing it in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Some some places in your garden may need more water than okay. other places, you know. What do you grow? Everything. Oh, what, what? Yeah, well, you already <laughs> told me you went and got tomatoes we, and we, peppers. We have shelly beans, crowder peas, black eyed peas, okra, corn, tomatoes, squash, Several kinds of squash. Acorn squash, butternut squash, yellow squash, crooked neck squash. The snake squash. Snake gourd squash. <laughs> Why my husband did that one, like that I'm not well. sure. I'm I guess we're going to, we're a music family, so maybe we're just going to make some gourds, gourds. after, yeah. after okay. they dry out. Okay. We have um, uh, collard greens, rutabagas. Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts. Broccoli. broccoli uh, green beans, wax beans, <laughs> Swiss chard. <laughs> Um, cabbage, green and purple. Yep, I was going to say purple. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. Is that about all? You don't grow any celery? <laughs> no, we have <laughs> onions though. Yeah, okay. onions. Okay. Yeah. Then we I have our, our celery our, either. Then we have our peach tree, celery. our apple, apple tree, trees. our pear trees. Okay. Also, we have plums. Okay. Yeah, okay. apples. Okay. Do you mm -hmm. let your plums ripen? To the full. Yeah, of we the we keep the kids off till they actually ripen. Okay, and eat I have them to then. come because I'm missing. Apple trees. I know what it's going to taste cherries, like. Cherries, cherry trees. Cherries. The cherries are out. Plums okay. are out okay. now. Yeah, now peaches are gone. Peaches are gone. The only mm -hmm. things left are pears and apples now for okay. trees. What about um, grapes? Any? No grapes. grapes just no. finished. Um, okay. Yeah, you yeah. Have, did you have grapes? What kind no, of grapes? we didn't the have Basu grapes. The Basu Farms had grapes. Basu, so. they did. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, we they didn't had have grapes. grapes. Yeah, I think, I think they, they just. And we have local farm farmers too. around that have blueberries, so blueberries okay. are just yeah, abundant. Just and, and, and during the holidays, uh, you can actually get turkeys that are fresh turkeys that are grown mm -hmm. by the farmers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you I don't think from the farmers cooperative, you can get those farm those. Mm -hmm. uh, those we raise turkeys. our own turkeys. You raise mm -hmm. your own. Yeah, turkeys. Yeah, this year we didn't. Last year we did. We had um, and you know, as a matter of fact, I was looking in the freezer yesterday at Christmas and Thanksgiving. Uh huh. That's the last two mm -hmm. we named them. We named the last two Christmas and Thanksgiving. <laughs> 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 what is this? Thank you. What are their names? And they were gobbling all around the yard. We're like, that's Christmas and that's Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> All right. the last two. I think we like geese better. Yeah. Geese and too. duck better than turkey. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have water, a water supply. Oh, yeah. 
Well, we, we have, have well. we still have a well water yeah. well water. Okay, where we, we do live. Too. Okay, we still so do. we both okay. still have well yeah. water. But you have indoor plumbing too, don't you? We both yeah. have indoor plumbing. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that does that come from the well? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have a deep well. Do you have? Deep yeah, we have deep and shallow. Okay. Oh, yeah. We just have deep well. shallow wells. Well, deep is well. Shallow wells usually go up to twenty eight feet, 24 okay. to 28 feet. Um, if you're digging a well deep into the ground, okay. it's about 24, 28 feet. Shallow, uh, deep wells start after 28. Okay. Uh, but usually deep wells can go 200. We have one that's 200 feet and we have one that's 48 feet. Okay. So uh, our shallow well is really kind of in between. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. we, s we still consider it a shallow well. Okay. And it's just tapping, it's which, which aquifer or vein you're tapping into. Okay. You know? It's the best water okay. ever. And the benefit of that, when you're Best farmers, water. when you water your plants, <laughs> okay. you're not paying for the water. There you so go. can you imagine if you had to, you was on city water? Well, right. first of all, it's chlorinated. Okay. That would be a problem. That's a problem right. for but plants. <laughs> if you was on city water and then you have to water your plants like, every day for say seven days straight, yeah. right? Oh yeah. That would be a for bill. The whole it would be formidable. You, <laughs> you couldn't, <laughs> couldn't afford it. You couldn't afford it. Couldn't. So it couldn't I mean, farmers couldn't it. do without yeah. a. Uh, their own wells. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have to have mm -hmm. wells. Then, of course, uh, you have indoor plumbing. You have wells. You you don't you have your own supply of water, which God gave us all in the first place. And then, if are you on the grid, off the grid, partly? We wish. <laughs> we wish. Okay. <laughs> which, not which, yet. Which yeah. way? Okay. No, we wish that yet. we were off the grid. <laughs> okay. So you're you're on the grid. Yeah, we and, still are. And you still get. Mm -hmm. uh, a, Electricity Let's from ComEd. What a, and what about gas? Use propane or We you have use propane. We don't have natural gas in our community. We no, okay. we don't, there's no natural gas in our community. Okay. Propane is, uh, we're, mm -hmm. you know, no, we're, um, we've narrowed it down to just propane for cooking. Okay. Uh, so that we can we weed ourselves off the grid. But even when I get off the grid, I, I still like to have the fire light up for gas. Okay. Um, you for have the a stove. fireplace or something. And I have a fire, yeah, we have a fireplace. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. right, right. Mm -hmm. So we use a lot of the fire, um, you know, our fireplace for heating the house too okay. during the winter time. Okay. Mm -hmm. During the winter time, you also get to rest. Oh, don't yes. Don't you, some? As, well, I don't think my husband ever rests. No. Now well, we have you animals. Can't be out there. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. So we you have animals mm -hmm. now. You tend, you tend the animals. You have a dog? We do. Yes, we have a dog. Yeah, yeah you have four cats now too, right? You have a dog mm -hmm. and four cats. Yeah, what's the dog. idea behind the four dog, four cats? Kids. Okay. You know, kids, kids like animals, find them. and or are they no, they like animals. Okay. They like the little pets. Okay. We have one. The seven-year-old just is a cat. She <laughs> loves cats. <laughs> okay. You know, so we got them because the kids. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now let's talk about the kids since the kids popped up <laughs> in the conversation. <laughs> You've got two children. Yes. You homeschooled mm -hmm. Pasama all yes. the way to through to what? To high school? All the way through till she started high school. We both homeschooled our children um, together collectively. Okay. Uh, so okay. Pasama was a part of that. that okay. The older kids, our younger kids are in school now, but okay. we we very mm -hmm. closely we monitor the what's going on yeah, in we that work school. With the school as well. I mm -hmm. know Very you close. do. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I understand there was a school board meeting just recently, maybe today. Yeah, there's yeah. Tuesday. There's a school yeah, board Tuesday, meeting. Tuesday, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you work in collaboration with the school in any way? Do you what do you do? Um, yeah, well, we, for the last three years, four years, we did four science fairs. Louise, did you realize that? Did we really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did. Well, we're, um, we did four science fairs working with the schools as, as science fair coordinators for the school. Okay. Um, introducing science. We do a lot of projects independent of the school and that we introduce into the school okay. to uh, mm -hmm. assist the school, whether it was technology. We did a lot of programs, technology. Mm -hmm. We also uh, assisted the school with the ISA program. which What's is ISA? Illinois, Illinois starts a uh, Illinois Steps Ahead, mm -hmm. okay. which is part of the Gear Up program. So we helped start that in our school, our local school. What's Louise Illinois and I. Steps Ahead? It was a wonderful program. Yes, it was. It's it terminated was terminated now. Okay, um, mm -hmm. but it it focused on three, year, four years of four. Actually, it was from seventh or eighth grade all the way to twelfth grade to that 12th you can grade. get involved with it. But okay. we had only four four groups. So seventh, eighth graders. Seventh, eighth, there was three groups, seventh, eighth, and ninth graders. Okay. That we actually tracked. We got them enrolled in the program, and the state, once they were enrolled, the state put a trust fund 
for these students. Okay. And we track them. We provide programs for them and track their um, track them through high school. Okay. And at the end of their high school year, when they graduated, they had a college scholarship waiting for them. Really? Mm -hmm. Yes. For all the ones who participated in the program okay. for at least a minimum of two years, okay. two to four years, they had a scholarship waiting for them. Blessedly, um, our children yeah, participated our in that okay. and were able to, mm -hmm. to get to reap that benefit. Yes. Yeah. Okay, very good. one of the scholarship recipients now, even though okay. she's at University of Tampa, she's okay. Yeah. And her, mm -hmm. yeah, her children. We have three too. kids that was in the program, came through the program. Yeah. Okay. The program was a college prep. Program. You had college age children. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So they were initially homeschooled. What or? college are your your uh, college age children attending? We have one right now that's going to um, Wright State University in Dayton, Ohio. He's in the actually in the master's program there now. Okay. And then we have three that's going to um, Macomb with Macomb, Illinois at Western Illinois University, which is my husband's alma mater. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> See the and so there's three of them going there, and okay. two of them will be graduating in May. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we so have, you have those four three. kids in mm -hmm. college. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and you got one. And then I have a nine-year-old. <laughs> and you have <laughs> so a nine-year-old. He's in fifth grade. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, and he's mm -hmm. at the local school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And her younger three are at the local school. Okay. Where we yeah. are. What's Pasama's major? Um, evolutionary biology, marine science. Why? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I say why. <laughs> why, why do that? How does, that? How does a child who was all that. raised on a farm mm -hmm. <laughs> get to the old and go to the house <laughs> and when it, well, they were in homeschool, which is, we always tease about this. Well, while they were homeschooled, Pasama was a very active student mm -hmm. of nature. She mm -hmm. loved it. She loved water, um, you know, um, f from the time she was three when she didn't want to put her head in water mm -hmm. until the time she was nine or ten when she was swimming like a fish. Mm -hmm. She loved be dealing with aquatics. Mm -hmm. And the f one of the first Earth Day celebrations we did yeah. mm -hmm. was the premise was surrounding free Lolita, the whale in Florida. Mm -hmm. And that was the first and she organized <laughs> and started Earth Day celebration because she wanted all the homeschool kids to rally around freeing Lolita the whale <laughs> in Florida. <laughs> and I we used to talk I found the tissue papers and, and they sent this big old thing in and petitioned and <laughs> So anyway, moving forward, and then she ended up working with the Shedd Aquarium. Um, mm -hmm. She got a scholarship to do their uh, Lake Ecology program, got another mm -hmm. scholarship to do their Bahama program, studying ocean aquatics mm -hmm. and research at, um, at Shark Lab and in the Bahamas, and became a, their youngest manager for two years, working in the Shedd Aquarium. So this was a natural fit, mm -hmm. <laughs> just mm -hmm. a natural progression of b keeping that connection. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, she wants to work with elephants. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Mm -hmm. Large mammals, whales, elephants, as far as she's concerned, same difference. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. What years this in college? She's a sophomore. Now? She's yes. a sophomore in yes. college. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, technically she's a junior, but and she, she was homeschooled. She was homeschooled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See? And they said it wouldn't work. Yeah, we have. Um, we had very successful. I mean, we have the one that is, see, the oldest one who's 24. Who's mm -hmm. who's in the master's program? Now, the oldest no. one who's twenty four. He's in the national military. guard. He's in the military. Okay. Yeah. He's national guard and then working and okay. then in and out of college at at Wright State. Okay. But he he went to preschool when he was five. Okay. And homeschooled ever since and graduated from homeschool. Okay. And so did the one under him, which is Marcel. Marcel. Who's who's now twenty three? Okay, and, and the, the two masters? twins. Well, the twins under him. Okay, they're twenty one. They graduated out of home school. Okay, um, they're on a on the ISA scholarship now, which they I mean, they get seventy four seventy four hundred dollars a year. Okay, for school, um, and then the one under them, which is Marshall, he's a sophomore at um, at Western. He is. He gets ten thousand dollars a year. Okay. To go to school, and he he actually went. His first day of school, of public school, was when he was a sophomore in high school. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. Really. That's the first day of his actual public school experience. And what yeah. what, what are their majors? At the same time. 
Yeah. <laughs> that's that's when time. we all got yeah. out of homeschooling. Right. Okay. Their sophomore year. Their okay. sophomore year. Sophomore high year of high school. Yeah. And then we had the other six at home. Okay. Five. Five. Whatever okay. number. Okay. <laughs> they were still at home. What are their, their majors? What are we looking um, for? The oldest one is in computer engineering. Okay. Uh, that's a 24 year old. He hasn't finished yet. The 23 year old, or yeah, 23 year old is uh, mechanical engineering. That's what he graduated in. And he's in his master's program now. Okay. The and twins, just got back from Taiwan. Oh, just got back from Taiwan on an uh, engineering trip okay. there. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the twins under him, want the, the, the guy is in music, mm -hmm. uh, music composition, the girl, is in um, food, hotel restaurant food management. hotel restaurant management. Mm -hmm. um, the the guy <laughs> number five, Marshall. <laughs> Marshall. <laughs> he is uh, engineering technology. Okay. Um, and that's that's the five. That's the five that's in the college scene. The other okay. five are still high school and okay. grade school. So you did say five plus five. So there are yeah. ten <laughs> children in the Anthony family. There is ten of them. And the youngest is seven, and the oldest is twenty-four. Correct. That's mm -hmm. a long stretch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Were they all uh, home births? No, we had one home birth actually. Mm -hmm. One home birth. One unassisted home birth. So okay. daddy yeah. and mommy were the doctors. Delivered the baby. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Were mm -hmm. they breastfed? All. All of them were breastfed. All of them mm -hmm. were breastfed. All of them. Both sets of twins. Yes. Okay. And the other Both birth. sets of twins. Mm -hmm. And both of mine were home births. Okay. Mm -hmm. At home. And, and mm -hmm. I remember Jafunsa mm -hmm. yeah. uh, assisted you at yeah, least one of the Yeah, she came in with the, the last baby. Right. She mm -hmm. wanted, yeah. Right. And it was more of, uh, which was great, Dr. Jafunsa, I, I love her for being there. And Louise was there as well. Okay. And, and Louise, no, we, we invited uh. people if they wanted to come. <laughs> then they can and they just kind of showed up okay well that okay. was for her for me i didn't want anybody of my family okay <laughs> right. Okay. Right. i said yeah she I had done it before so right. this is her second time second so okay. <laughs> right. i had a, i had specifically had a midwife the first time okay um and then the second time around which was a 10 year stretch okay <laughs> right right Ten right. years you, between the first you, and the okay. last so i said okay and for my mom's sake okay. so she wouldn't be so concerned about me in the country in the middle of the winter right before right. Christmas. Mm -hmm. right. having a child I said all right come on down yes we have Dr. Jones to come through that'd be fine mm -hmm. right. Louise right. and Pam Basu was there right. so it was really great it was mm -hmm. a beautiful experience right. of sisterhood mm -hmm. um, being present there so I really enjoyed it and mm -hmm. the wonderful thing about this story is that Dr. Jafunsa is now your neighbor. And then ah! yes, and she <laughs> said, she called one day and said, the land available was next to you guys. Me and Fred bought the land. We're so, really? Oh, so right. we became neighbors right. and right. it was right. really great. And right. I was so glad because we used their land as homeschool parents mm -hmm. um, in our organization. We used that land to tour our, our children on, mm -hmm. to learning about different aspects of natural yeah. law. Mm -hmm. Nature's Conservancy helped us go through a and learning about the different species out there in Pembroke, the native species. And you of plants. have mm -hmm. and a that wide was variety of species and yes, birds. We do. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. we homeschooled our children to understand and love that fact. And so it was fantastic that Fred and Jafunza bought it because we knew they would protect the land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was so sacred to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're lucky to have neighbors like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So now we got. Now we're down to the point at which we. We farmed the food, uh, we, 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 we planted it, and then I presume you know, we took in the part about weeding it and, and getting, you know, getting rid of the whatever it is that keeps you from being able to harvest it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then we harvest it, mm -hmm. and then we preserve it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So do you do any drying? Oh, yeah. You like do, she's do dry dehydration mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. okay and and the canning. Mm -hmm. You yes. have and then we freeze. You have mm -hmm. any special equipment for this, or are you just using big pots and mason jars? That's, that's the special that's equipment. That's the special yeah. equipment. <laughs> the special equipment is big. My girlfriend who's living Not with a me now. Cooker? 
I'm my girlfriend afraid of pressure cookers. I'm afraid of them too. And I've then, always and been then afraid you of do, pressure cookers. You do hear about, you know, all that high heat kills yeah. a lot of the um, nutrients in Absolutely. the Why well, didn't somebody mm -hmm. tell me that before yeah. I brought, mm -hmm. bought a pressure cooker? <laughs> oh, you should have asked us. We, 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 we do it the old fashioned way. So there's, way a, you know, there's a debate, cookers, even yeah. with steaming, there's a debate yeah. with the, the high heat okay. and um, okay. preparing your foods. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But my girlfriend who's staying with me now is so wonderful because this is her first day. She's at home preparing the tomatoes for sauce. Okay. We're, we're, you know, all the tomatoes we've collected out of the garden so far. Okay. Today we're, so this is her first, you know, opportunity to prepare tomatoes and can them for making homemade pasta sauce. Okay. <laughs> so she's getting a kick out of that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's not like you're not running out to the convenience store. No, you won't have to. Well, it, it, I, I still <laughs> remember when a Kibalon, when they still had a Kibalon. Okay. We went six months without having to go grocery shopping. We had our garden, uh -huh. and there's things that we didn't buy, or not that we didn't buy, things then that we grow. didn't grow, uh -huh. like rice and right. flowers. Right. We bought that from a key exactly. in bulk. Right. You know, very good price and very good food. Right. I didn't have to go shopping at a <laughs> store. Okay. But now you do have to go get for rice and mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you do any cooperative stuff? Or is every man on his own? We have a co-op. Yeah. Well, two up. Well, well, I'm two thinking levels, about so. you know if you need to get flour and mm -hmm. and meal and mm -hmm. salt and all of whatever things that are staples that you need when you're preparing meals. Um, the, the more of it you buy, the, right. the cheaper the price is. Absolutely. And we do work with uh, the Healthy Food Hub, which Fred and Jafunza, which right. is similar to a Kibalon, and that's right. kind of the premise in which they started theirs. And as a matter right. of fact, it kind of evolved mm -hmm. to that because we were doing the cooperative buying even in Pembroke, mm -hmm. and we were all a part of that. And mm -hmm. they continue that, and J Dr. Jafunza continued that even through her practice. Mm -hmm. And it evolved into you know, the healthy food hub that's out of Betty Shabazz School now, and so, mm -hmm. which is great. So that, you know, still allows access to bulk goods mm -hmm. for flowers and rices and things like that. Well, what do you do for entertainment, for heaven's sakes? Oh, oh gee. You can't, you oh. can't, you can't sit down and watch television all well, day if you know. No, no, not all oh, day, good. but you can't I mean, we should get done. If we still have kids. kids, I mean, that are kids, so <laughs> right. they do like watching yeah. TV Play and they video like games. playing video games. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but we also go to the Y, you know. Yeah. Okay. We have to learn some skills while we're playing. Right. Yes. You know, they pl all play music, so okay. we're on the piano, we're singing. Okay. Um, we're out playing volleyball or running around with the t-ball set in mm -hmm. the yard. We have a big yard, okay. you know. And that's the beautiful mm -hmm. thing about living in a country that um, I, you know, I find so enjoying. I can kick my son out and say, all right, time off the TV, go run outside and, right. and not have to worry about him. Right. Not have to worry about where he's at. He'll go across the fields to, you know, the Carter Wright's place or, right. you know, and, and it's or down the street to some other neighbors. But we have a humongous yard that he can just explore on his mm -hmm. own. Mm -hmm. And, you know, or he's over to Anthony's and, you know, it's good, clean, and find fun things that without interest having him. to worry about right. where they are or what's, right. mm -hmm. and you don't hear, you know, the, the gunshots or right. the sirens on right. a continuous basis and that that level of stress is, is taken away from you mm -hmm. and they learn to entertain themselves they do mm -hmm. which is I, you know I have grandchildren to say I'm bored they have mm -hmm. everything in the world but they're well, bored if they say that in my house there's always work to do that's <laughs> right so if you bored let me well, go there clean that up or That's go to the garden and do that or <laughs> get them clothes, put them on the line, do right. what, you know, I'll There's tell you. Oh, oh yes. you got a clothesline. <laughs> yes, we both have clothesline. That's so <laughs> when you, wait a minute, you, wait a minute, you don't also have no, a we don't have a wash, no, wash no, no, no. We have washers and dryers. We, we, have, but we have evolved from <laughs> that as well. I tell people I'm not going to wring my own chickens anymore unless I absolutely have to. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll raise the chickens and we, we process our chickens. We we'll, even if we take them down to you know if we have a lot of chickens which sometimes we have maybe two hundred chickens oh my um, and then we'll take them down to have them process okay but if there's you know if I had to do five or ten I mean I may have processed them myself but okay yeah, as a kid if I yeah. wanted if I wanted chicken for dinner my grandmother would say go and get them I have you know. seen. Mm -hmm. 
the chicken thing. I have yes. seen wringing mm. the chicken's mm. neck. I have seen dipping them in very hot water and then plucking off the feathers. Yes. I have seen yes. that. And that's, okay, that's, that's what we do. That's labor that's and process. Process. <laughs> that's right. Well, when you have a family of 10 kids, I know, I know. And a husband that I never stops to, working, who's the right. energizer battery. Okay. I okay. had to process my ducks. I said, <laughs> Louise, I need to borrow a few children. <laughs> and they come over and they help me process the ducks. Okay. And they make it a whole okay. morning. It's, so. And it's not like they just love doing that. No, but, they don't okay. like doing that. But, but you know, that's part like. of contributing. So they yeah. contribute. Mm -hmm. But we always tell the children, boredom is your own responsibility. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't blame you for that. I don't blame you for that. Take care when of. you talk about having children go out to play, yeah. it is very difficult in cities, especially in areas of the city that are virtual war zones, yes. mm -hmm. to allow young people to be on the street. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, owning a bike can, you know, make you a target because somebody yes. else can decide that you shouldn't have it or they should have it. And so, you know, the, the kinds of things that, you know, children sitting on the porch, playing outside in yes. front of the house, and especially at night if the, if the older people are, are up, they would let you stay out longer, you mm -hmm. know. But if it's dangerous for people to sit on the porch and dangerous for people to be out on the street, mm -hmm. then of course children are in fact confined, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And a lot of this pent up energy finds its mm -hmm. way into behavior that is, you know, socially unacceptable. Yes. Because you got it. Children have to do something with their energy. Mm -hmm. But when they mm -hmm. can go out and they can explore and they can roam, they can discover things mm -hmm. and they can they can in also invent things. Mm -hmm. You know, they decide, you know, slingshots used to be back in the mm -hmm. day oh, that yeah. boys would make, yes. you know, mm -hmm. yes. and they they'd make. Um, they take uh, two Go pieces parts. of, of <laughs> two by four or whatever the mm -hmm. size of this wood is mm -hmm. and they make a scooter and they mm -hmm. put the skate wheels on the bottom there and nail bottle tops all over it for <laughs> decorations, you know, yeah. and have, you know, uh, some other form of entertainment. So you could jump rope, you could have yo-yos, you know, you mm -hmm. could play jacks. There were things that you could do that didn't require you to have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And w it created a lot of or enjoyment, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my daughter was telling me that, you know, young people just, you know, they just Twitter and they Facebook and they tweet and they, mm -hmm. they you know, they stay in touch. I said, no, they're not in touch mm -hmm. because they're not in touch with each other. Mm -hmm. Children are yes. not interacting with each other mm -hmm. in a real sense. Yes. You know, this, mm -hmm. this sending e electronic messages saying, I'm over here, where are you? is not the <laughs> same as people being together, exchanging mm -hmm. ideas and enjoying each other's company. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, children don't have socialization. That's true. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. in large measure and mm -hmm. it's in you know yeah interacting with one another you know with each other in a natural setting they're also disconnecting from the natural world itself mm -hmm. and um, last year uh, my, my son and I were in the greenhouse and it was toward this time of year I think we were putting up things or we were, we were planting so I don't no, it must mm. have been, yeah, it, we were doing some things in the greenhouse. And I said, oh, go and get your radio so we can have some music out here while we were doing, you know. Mm -hmm. And he said, Ma, we already have our music. Don't you hear the birds chirping? Mm -hmm. You know, singing. Mm -hmm. and, Why are and, you and, and, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and then I, I was like, you're right. I mean, he enjoyed the solitude mm -hmm. of just being out there mm -hmm. in nature mm -hmm. and hearing the sounds that nature provided. And I realized and I said, I, a big smile went across my face. I said, I'm in the right place. Right. I'm in the right place. Mm -hmm. Right. And your husband is a technological wizard. <laughs> so, you know, you 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 bring some skills to the table. <laughs> you folks know how to do some stuff. <laughs> we have skills. Yeah, we, we, have, skills. we have black skills. That's, that's right. for sure. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we can hold so on. So you're not barefoot <laughs> and, and pregnant and dumb. You know, well, you, barefoot and pregnant. Well, that chapter is. is Pass for me. Yeah. Okay. And but I like being barefoot. Yeah. And I mean, mm -hmm. that was a choice. It wasn't. I mean, I like, <laughs> I like walking on the ground with, with my feet. With no shoes on. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. We both you know, enjoy so mm -hmm. the earth and to the and feet. birthing babies and carrying babies. They were, you know, that was okay for me. my body could take it. Mm -hmm. No, not everybody's. Obviously, could. your body <laughs> is, is, not, is none the worse for wear. 
So, you know, it was wonderful for me, you know, you know, but that chapter's closed now. We're moving on so to something else. So you've been mm -hmm. on a farm for how many years from the time you were? An arm baby. I've been in the country. An arm father. baby. Mm -hmm. You've been in the, in mm -hmm. the country all yes. these years. You've yes. been there 20. Basic, 20, mm -hmm. right. 20 directly on, on my own farm. Okay. But being raised since an since okay. arm baby. And on, counting. And mm -hmm. on the With no plans farm. to go anywhere. Well, I'm not going to say that. I mean, you may, when the leaves start falling, you know, <laughs> down on the ground in right. a few years, I may, you know, board up and go to, to my summer home or winter home, should I say. Right. <laughs> Where would your yeah. winter home be? Where it is warm. <laughs> <laughs> so I have That's access I to the home. fruit trees all mm -hmm. around, okay. the oranges and more of the citrus fruits. Okay, would you have That's a farm it. situation? or? Yeah, I do? don't think I can ever get away from You don't think you growing. can do the city? We're not, and even if we were to find something warm, we wouldn't give up where we are. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't leave. I might, I'm coming any day now. <laughs> what would you tell people who might be interested in this green living mm -hmm. or this living green? You, should they buy some land? Should they Absolutely. go looking? Should they? Is there anything available in Pembroke? Ho um, I just, um, as a matter of fact, I got new neighbors that we have new neighbors that just joined us. Um, a couple from Chicago who's, who just bought ten acres, almost ten acres, okay. for their retirement home okay. that they look to retire and they're selling their places here and looking to. Yeah, mm -hmm. establish themselves in Pembroke okay. in, over the next year or so. Okay. And um, mm -hmm. that's not the first couple that are, there's waves of people that are coming. And Pembroke, I know lots so of people who own land that. down there who have not yet made the move. Right. But they have yeah. bought land. But they've mm -hmm. bought the land. Right. And so mm -hmm. that's the first step. And I think mm -hmm. probably real estate is the most valuable asset you Absolutely. can have. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's you know, something you can pass along to your children. Right. Right. I know, you know, even though, you know, people may not be able to up and uproot themselves and move somewhere, you can, mm -hmm. I see all the time, you know, the stories about the little plots of land next to yes. your house mm -hmm. or the bay window with mm -hmm. plants and stuff. You can, you not, might have to do some research, but you can grow things in your house mm -hmm. or around your house, mm -hmm. you know, starting there if you can't uproot and go get, because mm -hmm. even if you uproot and go get a piece of land, you're going to have to learn how to farm that land. Oh, it's yeah. not easy. It's not easy. If you don't know, about it. <laughs> you know, so you might want to start your little bay window of plants right, right oh, now right. to learn a few things right. to, before you go out there and get a, you know, right. large acre. Or well, acre isn't really large, but for people who from the city, a large acre. Yeah, <laughs> an acre that, is bigger than any yeah. house is sitting on in this the city. This is true. One right. of the things that uh, Louise and I also had the wonderful privilege of working with people in Michigan uh, with families mm -hmm. and trying to share some of these um, same ideologies with uh, different families in Michigan um, in a particular program. One of the things I always say, if you're dealing with sustainability, it's the first thing, the rule of sustainability is self-preservation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the first rule. So what you do, you want to make sure that you're able to feed yourself. Mm-hmm feed your family. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have things to share, why we farm? We farm because we want to feed our families first. Mm -hmm. And if we have wonderful things to share with the rest of the community, great. And then the community at large, fantastic. But that's not why we farm. We farm to feed our families. 